We welcome you to Conversations and Coffee today. We are mid-May of 2021, and the sun is shining here in Columbus, Ohio. I'm Ellen O'Shaughnessy, coordinator of the program. We're here virtually and by virtue of our creative technician, Lindsay Lasanti, who brings us the Zoom connection. Lindsay's a graduate of Otterbein University. Katie Fisher, a graduate of Columbus College of Art and Design, is our pro in getting the word out for our beloved Recreation and Parks Cultural Arts Center, the beautiful brick building in the Civil War located downtown Columbus, 139 West Main Street, across from Bicentennial Park. Our director is Jeffrey Martin, and our associate director is Todd Camp. Bozzy Douglas most graciously meets and greets everyone by phone and in person. I have one of her works of art behind me, fashion designer and artist. Nelson Wilson takes care of our beautiful space where we work and gather. Our artist today, Jennifer McCracken, so glad to have you, is also on our staff. Being about so many administrative tasks like organizing data entry, studio space, and welcoming guests, artists that make it easier for us all. Jennifer, we're so happy and delighted you're sharing your stunning and beautiful art and sculpture with Experiments in Nature, as you name it. Mm -hmm. presented in your recent month-long show at the Studios on High. Jennifer is a graduate of the Columbus College of Art and Design in 1990. Studied enameling at the Cultural Arts Center as well. Creating jewelry out of copper enameling and upcycling jewelry boxes with enamel painting and using, this is so amazing, you're going to tell us about it, graphite, poissonne, watercolor to make enamel illustrations. Experiments in Nature, the name of your show at Studio Zone High in March, was, as you say, your first enamel painting exhibit. And, mm -hmm. and explain to us, I, I was thinking it up, it's a technique in which glass powder is fused into metal at a temperature of about 1500 degrees, huh? And, yeah. and, and that dimension that you bring, you say, I really like walking through the woods and just certain elements of a tree or a vine will catch my attention. But you say, if you do photorealism, it still isn't enough. It doesn't have that full look. So with your art, you express that feeling of dimension that attracted you in the beauty of the walk and viewing trees and vines and rock formations. Wonderful. You've been inspired by Asian culture as you spent 19 years doing missionary work in Taiwan, where your art focused mostly on illustrations for the Taiwanese Bible. You share that possibly your next enamel project, I really look forward to this, will focus on the carefree dogs that you met in the streets of Taiwan. The article in Columbus Alive, written for your show at Studios on High, quotes Jennifer in this reference to the Taiwanese dogs that possibly will be her next enameling work. You say, they were the most chill, relaxed, happy dogs in the world, she said. And I like how they're just happy with who they are. And I'd like to express that feeling of getting people to be happy with who they are. So this is wonderful. And I want to tell you, we have not doggies from Taiwan, but from Havana, Cuba, Dipsy and Doodles. So with them, we look forward to your creative enameling art of dogs in Taiwan. Jennifer was so delighted to have you. Take it Thank away. You. 
Okay. Um, oh, <laughs> so uh, my show um, experiments in nature is just something that I'd been mulling over and I had an opportunity to do a show. So I um, was pushed because we, uh, the only space available was March and I had about four months to get the work done. So I really, uh, that actually helps me to work faster is when I have a deadline. So um, I, I was able to try a lot of different things and, uh, sorry, oh. <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm uh, on a Zoom meeting. <laughs> sorry, I'm out in the studio, it's on high and uh, we're working today, but usually we don't have a lot of customers, so yeah. So, um, no, you can have one. <laughs> <laughs> We're open. Um, so I guess uh, we show my first, I think they're a series of graphite enamels. Mm. No, that's not the black and white ones. Yeah, so this is, um, one of my uh, graphic enamels, which it was a type of enameling that I, I really enjoyed because I like sketching. Um, and this way it's kind of, it gives another dimension having the um, enamel aspect of it. So I did a series, um, Lindsay, if you just wanna go through the series of uh, different uh, images, kind of hard to see, it's not as close up, yeah. That's good. Then you can see. So just different images I saw as I'm walking in nature. And um, the one before, the, the, the bramble, it's called brambles. And um, I just like the effect of the roots of the tree and then um, the basic the honeysuckle that's like everywhere, but just the lines that it gave it through the through the image. Mm. Uh, yeah, and then um, there's another one with three trees called leaning trees. Oh, we can look at that one, Lindsay. That's fine. Ah. Okay, here um, I kind of oh was focused on the rocks and the water and then and then the roots and the texture of the trunk. And then the next one with the three trees. Sorry, I should have put this in order. <laughs> yeah, so these are, I'm just struck by the images of these trees that are leaning into the creek as the creek bed is just kind of eating away from it. And um, I was actually walking this morning and uh, the tree in the middle is, is even more exposed. So my next image of that will be falling, <laughs> falling trees because <laughs> they, you know, it's only a matter of time before they're kind of all the way tilted over. But uh, that's kind of how nature goes with the erosion. Oh. Tell us how you're going about this. Hmm. It, what do you mean? Well, you're a, you must love to draw. Mm -hmm. And where does the enameling come in here? What am I seeing? Well, um, I think what I like about drawing on the enamel is I tend to press down very hard. And so um, I like the resistance that it gives me. And then the, um, the whiteness that comes through. Oh. Sometimes when you're working with pencil on paper, you get a lot of changes with the graphite. Um, so I like kind of the control that I can have better with drawing on the enamel. Oh, amazing. The rootedness of that tree. Yeah. Wow. So beautiful. Thank you. And I think I have, um, and then there's like two more flowers that I did. I kind of just see images and then um, 
figure out how I want to present them. So I try a lot of different things, which um, sometimes it's good to actually just focus on one type so you really perfect it. So that's where I'm trying to, to go with the, the copper on the enamel um, with doing different techniques like this uh, tree right here is um, it was a hollow tree and it was very large when I saw in Taiwan and I was trying to get the um, texture of the bark by doing uh, embossing mm. and kind of hammering out a very thin sheet of copper and then laying that on and then adding the, the wires to create images of vines. Oh. Uh, is if you can see down in the bottom, there's a kind of a clear where you see the copper and there's lines around it. There's these um, almost like glass called opalescence that um, when you melt it, it kind of makes a bubble and creates a line around um, where the glass uh, melts and pushes the colored enamel away. So oh. I, have, I have another image with the, uh, the sea pebbles. You could show that, Lindsay. I was seeing a bird there. See, huh? I'm, see, I'm seeing things in there. I'm seeing flowers and a bird, and you yeah. have to even intend <laughs> that, huh? And it just happens. It's yeah, gorgeous. Thank you. Okay, wait. Which one is the bird? Uh, the one with the sea pebbles. I'm so sorry. It's, not, it's up. By I interrupted there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's um a lot of orange and blue. There it is. Okay. So if you wanna um. Close up on the bottom area. Oh. So you can kind of, this actually um, didn't melt as much. So you can see more of the depth of the opalescence that I used there. Mm -hmm. And then I also um, hammered out copper to make, you know, bigger stones. And I decided not to enamel those just because I like the contrast with the, the blue pebbles and the copper. Oh, that is beautiful. Yeah, so that was a lot of, um, one technique you can use is, um, it's called kill, uh, clear fire, which is like a glue for enamel. And so I would, I just um, drew circles on the bottom and uh, sprinkled enamel over it in different colors. And that kind of held the shape of the uh, the stones mm. on the bottom. Mm. So, um, but if you want to go to Lindsay, um, the the small picture that has gold around it. Yeah, that one. And then if you could bring that close up mm. in. This mm. is one of the first pieces that I started specifically for the show. Um, whereas the, the bottom layer was something that I etched, um, vines and then filled it in with enamel. So you can, it's hard to see cause it's really small, but there's just different, um, textures in the background. And then I cut, uh, the copper, I cut the images out on the second layer and added the wire to it. Mm. So just kind of layers on layers to create um, dimension. So. Can I ask like, a technical question? How do you attach your layers together of the one? Yeah. Um, what I tend to do is uh, do you know do the bottom layer and try to do a thicker layer of enamel, and then you um, when the piece then layer the other piece that you're going to enamel on top of it. When you take it out of the kiln, I quickly take a very heavy, dense piece of steel and place it on it. And then uh, it fuses the glass together. But you have to do that right away um, when it's like red hot. Mm. And, and it stays. But you have to make sure that your copper is really clean because it, it gets what's called fire scale underneath it and um, then it doesn't stick as well because there's a, you know, be between the copper and the enamel is uh, like ash. So then it can fall away. And then you have to use shoe goo. 
which is one of the best mediums to glue things together. So, um, but then uh, my my favorite piece, um, if you go to, it's called intersecting vines. So it's um, got like orange linear vine elements. Yeah, there it is. Oh, that's um, experiments in nature on the card, huh? Yeah, yeah. So that was the card that I posted. This is my favorite piece. And um, I actually got, um, I entered it into um, the Cincinnati Women's Art Club and received first prize for it. So <laughs> and somebody got it, so I don't have it anymore. So I'm kind of like, oh, wait, <laughs> I really like that piece. But um, yeah, so this is where I got uh, a lot more detail. And in the background, I used um, a technique called um, Scrafito, where um, you put a layer of dark enamel, and then um, I sprayed it with uh, clear fire and um, then sprinkled a, a light blue, as you can see the, um, the sky area. And then to use a very fine um, needle to scratch in the trees that are in the very background. And then I also layered it with um, wire as well. Um, and then the, um, the bottom leaves are made with a very thin copper sheet that I um, basically embossed and cut out leaf shapes to simulate leaves on the ground. Because I like all the, it's hard to get all the, um, the elements that you see in nature actually in your image. You go kind of crazy and I, I'm a very detailed person. So I try to, <laughs> you can't do everything that you see. And um, yeah, so just kind of get an idea of the image. And, that was did you walk a lot in nature in taiwan uh yeah we um taiwan is two-thirds mountains yeah and so we hike a lot in the mountains and we go to the beach probably two or three times a year and walk around that mm. there's a place where you can climb up a waterfall and it's yeah mm. a lot of fun because when you're in the city, you're just kind of, you're surrounded by cement and buildings. So you have to get out in nature. But How long would it take you to produce this? Like what you're talking about needles in the background, getting those little branches. Probably like 20 hours. Hmm. Kind of, you know, with enameling, you just, not sure exactly how it's going to come out because you're, you're putting something into the fire and sit, it's sitting there it's not fire it's like a heating element like an oven and um mm. you know you can't see what is going sometimes if an enamel is contaminated it will react a different way and yeah there's well, 20 many hours 20 hours seems very efficient as i look at it it would seem like an eternity <laughs> it's a small piece. I'm working small so that I can do more detail. Uh -huh. Oh, wow. What size are these pieces? <clears throat> um, this one is about 10 by 10. Um, my larger, largest piece would be about 11 by 8. Um, there's a piece called Emerging Weeds. Um, if you could get that, um, it's it looks like a weed, and there's exposed copper. Yeah. And it has like a gold. Um, there it is. I see all of these again. <laughs> That's my largest piece. And that's about 11 by nine. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I realized when I was framing the pieces, I realized none of my images were a normal size. Like, you know, I couldn't just buy some frames and they would fit perfectly in it. So it was really frustrating. Um, I had to 
cut oh. everything and mount it and uh, took a lot of time. Mm. I love the colors in that. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, thank you. Did you enjoy the color classes at CCAD? Yeah, I did. I, I did really well in those classes and yeah, I like them. And it's just, it's amazing like, like the technical side of understanding color yeah. really can enhance, um, you know, the creative side of what you're doing. So, um, yeah, this originally was a weed that had a lot of branches and leaves that I was trying, that was coming out of the um, pavement. And uh, I was trying to get that image and it didn't quite work out. So I changed it around a little bit. And then when I fired it again, there was too much. I don't know if you can see the darker enamel that's around the yeah. flower. Um, it, that was all over it. So then I had to take a Dremel and I just sanded down to expose more of the copper to get uh. you know, a more balanced image with the color. Hmm. So it gave it some nice texture. Right. Um, yeah. And then Karana suggested putting the um, the little dots of color are um, chunks of glass that you can put on and it, it um, depending on how long you keep it in the kiln, it'll have um, more raised elements, kind of like the opalescent stuff, so. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. And the other image, that I really like it. Um, it has two leaves, like the two green. Oh. So I just, you know, as I'm walking, I see this one tree and there's just two leaves growing out of the trunk. And so I just wanted to em emphasize that. And so how did you do the leaves? Um, I cut them out of copper. <clears throat> Then I individually enameled them on these little, little teeny tiny trivets and then um, enameled them onto the, uh, the trunk. Oh, that's wonderful. And the, the trunk is also a, a embossed um, thin enamel. So I really like doing the embossed work. And again, tell uh, this one who doesn't know all of those techniques, <laughs> embossed? meaning uh to... where you know like um where you can raise a texture in something like you can emboss paper okay uh -huh. like wet where you press it on you know a kind of a mm -hmm. three-dimensional surface and that gives you it kind of raises the surface of it with metal you can it has to be like almost like foil and you like draw a line that raises it, but then you have to flip it around and draw lines next to that line. So it, it gives it uh, more strength. Ah. So you can do a lot of different things with it. Like I taught some kids how to make uh, tin boxes doing embossing and folding and yeah. That's wonderful. So, um, I'm gonna try to think of, let's go to another picture, Lindsay that we haven't seen. Uh, this one here, I was trying to um, kind of get the reflection of the trees <clears throat> on the water. So I did some more scraffito down at the bottom. Oh. And I had like a thick layer of the darker blue. So it's actually kind of um, textured where I cut it out. Because the enamel doesn't really um, move, uh, especially when you use the clear fire. Um, so it kind of just stays in its little spot. And then when it gets fired, it, it will melt and smooth out. So. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, thank you. So that's the reflection of what we're looking at. Yeah, so that's oh. the reflection of the... Oh. I'm gonna go back to that because it's not quite exactly what I wanted. So. <laughs> um, you wanna scroll Lindsay to another? Okay. And this one here is, uh, there are these two trees leaning into the water and they're called um, 
close friends because the branches it's kind of hard to see if it's not if you're not present in it but they look like they were holding hands so oh on the top left corner the trees were holding hands how beautiful so it kind of looks like snow there was snow on the trees at the time as well and you walk around different parks and uh yeah my husband and i go hike uh you know walking and blended woods or sharon woods and then we have the over being right near our house so ah. do my little morning walk there and watch the different changes of the season oh, wonderful. Okay. is that all the images i think Oh, there's, um, with this one, I was enameling a piece that I had cut out. Uh, it's called Ghost Trees. And um, I did a couple layers of enamel and moved the, the cutout piece. And when I lifted it up, it had these different layers of um, color, kind of like with a stencil. I was like, oh, I really like that. So then I did this image using that metal stencil that I had made. Um, so you can kind of see a ghost image of the, uh, the trees. And then there's another piece that has the actual um, piece that I cut out. Very similar. Can you find it, Lindsay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's this, so. Wonderful. This is the piece that I cut out of copper and broke about 50 saw blades. Mm -hmm. You can um, enlarge it, Lindsay, because there's actually, I did graphite underneath it, but it's hard to see from a photo. So these were trees going down, growing off the ravine. Oh, wow. And, uh, Well, I think that's all the images that I have. I so you talked about the stencil. It, it's mm -hmm. the same one, right? So like this here is just the mm -hmm. same as that. Okay. Yeah. Cool. yeah. So yeah, so I did. I there's two layers of the the second one that you showed, and so I just I laid it over copper, sprinkled enamel and then turned it and sprinkled more and so it gave um you know different thicknesses of the enamel so you could see the different images yeah. uh, i think that's i think that's all but i'm just going to double check <laughs> i'd love to see all of them i'd love to see <laughs> through all of them again <laughs> <clears throat> they were so beautiful just to gaze at them. <laughs> like you're walking through and watching the beauty of the trees. And I'd like to just walk through these and see the beauty of each of these. What do you think, Lindsay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's take a walk. <laughs> oh, gorgeous. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, I can set it up in your hallway and you can walk through it. <laughs> you know, I have to get a show in the loft gallery, the main gallery. Yeah. yeah. I imagine the people loved it at Studios on High. Um, yeah, I got a lot of good response from people. So uh, it was very encouraging considering it was my first attempt at a show. So. And I said, co worker Carol. Hi. She's a fellow jeweler. She does silversmith work. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So that's, that's all I have. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> well, very, um, you enjoy okay. what you're doing. I mean, yeah. the detail of it is phenomenal, but you're committed to it, huh? Mm -hmm. Tell us. 
Oh, um, yeah, you know, when I'm working on a piece, it's just, uh, even though it, it takes so much time, like this new piece I'm working on, um, I etched a tree trunk and it got some, you know, deep etching into it. Do you know what etching is? Mm, Where you put a chemical and basically where it's not covered with like paint it will eat away the, the metal and then you have kind of a, a deep uh, uh pole or whatever it is and so then i had to um dremel with a little tiny saw each piece so that um it got clean enough so then i could put the enamel into it so that's, I'm, I'm surprised at my patience with it because when I was younger, I was not that patient with with work. But now I just feel like I'm kind of I'm working on, you know, fixing my child or creating <laughs> something. Well, thank you for your patience because it gives us such beauty. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. So tell us something else you love to do about these works. Oh, I have a question. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you work on one piece at a time and finish that before you start another one? Um, a lot of times when I'm working, I'll do like two pieces. So like I can put one in the kiln while the, I'm working on the other one. Um, so it depends, but I tend to, um, once I get like the base enamels done, I focus on one to get all the wire work and the metal work done and then finish it so <laughs> kind of yes <laughs> um but yeah so I'll, then i'll finish the one and and then start on the metal work of the other one mm. yeah what about those jewelry boxes that you do uh, the jewelry boxes i'll show you um i do a lot of thrifting and discover it's like discovering little treasures oh. so I have this wooden one now this has got to be from the 70s and 80s it was either made in japan or taiwan uh, before china took over and uh, so i sanded it all down so that you see the nice wood and then um, this is embossed enamel wow like you now, now you know what it is <laughs> and wow. then i line it with fun material oh and here's another one where this is um stamp enameling where you um you take you know just a basic stamp with ink and press it onto the enamel like a layer of enamel and then sprinkle it with um more enamel and then it holds the shape and then you fire it so then you get it's kind of a quick way to create some interesting pieces wow and then this piece is uh see it one where i did um i used graphite and then i also drilled out so that you could see the white underneath the blue mm. so. Yeah. so this is this is my jewelry area oh, wow. how beautiful Thank you. And then there's the other jewelers. They have beautiful work too. <laughs> it's nice because we're we all do different work, so um, it's not necessarily a competition. You took uh, jewelry making at the Cultural Arts Center. Huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Karan. Karan. Yeah. And, uh, enameling with Karana. Uh huh. I also did enameling with Sharon too on Fridays. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your husband an artist? No, he's not. <laughs> Enjoy what you do, huh? <laughs> yeah, he does. He tries to give me a uh, critique <laughs> or, or give me helpful hints on how to do something better. <laughs> I'm like, why are you telling me this? You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. And, and uh, I, you're having lived for 19 years in Taiwan as mm -hmm. a missionary doing artwork.
for a Taiwanese Bible, mm -hmm. appreciating the dogs of Taiwan. Were they kind of loose and running around? Uh, why you, yeah. re you remark about them in particular and want this to be your next enameling project? Um, the, the preciousness of the dogs who are so yeah. happy. Tell us yeah. about it. Well, uh you know, you walk along the street and it's a busy street full of motor scooters and cars. It's very narrow. And you'll just see a dog taking a nap <laughs> and he gets up to stretch and, you know, he's not bothered by all the, the traffic and noise. And um, then like you'll drive by an underpass and you'll just see a group of dogs kind of running around in the field. and. <laughs> we call it a dog party from um so one of the childhood books we read to our kids called go dog go oh yeah and they have a dog party at hand so that's um but oftentimes there's some dogs that are trained to protect the house mm. uh, so if you're in the country and you're just taking a walk you want to carry a rock with you because the dogs will growl at you and you just raise your hand with your rock, say, look what I got, and then we'll just stop barking and leave you alone. Oh. So you understand, but understand each other. And uh, yeah. But, so, um, and are you going, are you beginning to draw the images of these dogs? You, uh, you know, how are you going about this? Um, yeah, well, I took a bunch of pictures and then, um, I started sketching one image because originally I was going to do it in color pencil and then I was like, wait, enameling would work really well. Um, so trying to decide like what um, techniques I'm going to use to capture like the gravel and um, you know, some of them are out in the woods and mm -hmm. yeah. And what are their breeds? Can you tell? Well, they're mostly a mix of, um, there's a specific Taiwanese dog. I forget, I forget the name of it, but they're, they've got like a, a curled tail and um, pointy ears and there's a lot black ones and like kind of a speckled brown and gray one. And they, they tend to be those dogs. People do have like, purebred dogs, but they don't let them run around the streets. These are just kind of your country mutt and uh, they all kind of look about the same, but maybe different colors. So what kind and breed of dog do you think you're going to have in your enameling project? Well, it, it'll be these, these country dogs or these, you know, uh -huh. scavengers. <laughs> but, well, we look forward to it. Yeah. Uh, drawing the detail of that, of course, you're so used to, as we have seen in these beautiful works. So that won't be so tough for you, huh? To draw a dog. No, no. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Just capturing their their uh, essence or whatever it would be. Yeah, the spirit of them. Not so happy. And, yeah. Look at that, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, oh, tell us a little about uh, how you think that Columbus College of Art and Design influenced what you're doing now. Um, well, one of the main things is I hear a critique in my head about, um, you know, the color and. Uh, you know, having a variation of line and things like that. I think that they um, really emphasized um, technique, especially the first year, you, you basically were doing a foundations course of color design and um, learning painting and figure drawing and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. um, it kind of pushes me to really uh, do my best in in the work because I think of the critiques from my teachers or we would have you know student critiques and things like that. So do any do the names of any of your teachers come to mind? Um 
Mr. Rasmussen was my sculpture teacher. And I believe Dr. King was one of my painting instructors. But a lot of them, I don't remember. I mean, you know, it's like 30 years sure. ago. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've had a few for conversations and coffee. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so. Katie, yeah, she's one of the instructors. I was just going to ask Katie, what do you think here? <laughs> The influence. I know I like the, yeah, the idea that like you always have the critique in your head as you're working, you know, and like the questions you ask if things are working or not working um, as you kind of go along and making it. Mm -hmm. So I agree with that too. Yeah. Really made an impression on me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And then uh, did you, to go to Taiwan, uh, you were just kind of inspired to do this missionary work, huh? Did you I, do art while you were there? Yes, I did. I um, I was doing art before that, but when I was living there, I really had a drive to want to create. And um, I had opportunities where we were um, just taking small portions of the Bible uh, to give out to people so it wasn't like as big as a really thick bible and so i would draw the uh, the images for it and i made them look more chinese so that they could kind of identify and not feel like it was a foreign thing for them so that was a lot of fun i looked at a lot of um <clears throat> old paintings and kind of got ideas from that um and then i also created a comic book that I did and that was that is quite a uh, chore to make characters because they have to keep the consistency and and everything so that was a big challenge and I haven't made another one since so. <laughs> oh, wonderful but the detail of that to do the comic book that that was the stories in the bible that comic book huh uh, yeah it was like one story of the, the fall of satan so oh. and i kind of improvised like what caused him to fall so he was oh, getting arrogant good one huh <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's great yeah. it provided a uh sword battle image oh, so you, know, you gotta have some fighting in your comics yes of course <laughs> oh. So tell us uh, how you enjoy working at the Cultural Arts Center. We are honored. Oh, okay. I'd be honest now. <laughs> I really like it. <laughs> you create and administer and greet. And I told you that uh, my husband comes in when I, I was part of an Asian um, American demonstration across the Bicentennial Park leading a prayer with a mayor and was I was a little nervous about it, but I thought, well, I'll just drop into the Cultural Arts Center and have a little time. Well, you and my husband started talking about Taiwan. Yeah. The way you were so present to us going in there. And uh, I just was relaxed and I said, I'm going out there, I'll just, it'll be fine. <laughs> you were but, wonderful. Well, so uh, you meet and greet. Yeah. And uh, organize some spaces for the artists. Mm -hmm. uh, do some data work. So yeah, I enjoy. Whatever that throws at me. Hey, can you do this? <laughs> <laughs> I really need some painting done. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. Which, actually, what I did a lot of in Taiwan is just kind of this—I don't know—jumble of different tasks. But um, but I really I love the building. And the people that come in are just wonderful and friendly. So I just enjoy talking with people and seeing what people are making. And yeah, it's fun. Although it gets kind of lonely at night when you know you have people come in, you talk a little bit, and then they go to their classes, and I just sit there and it's quiet. <laughs> it's getting dark, but yeah, I try to find something to keep me occupied. Oh, that's wonderful. You're there. I wanted to ask something about the appointments to come and see it. 
What if you're downtown and all of a sudden decide you want to go there? You, you can still come. Apartment? You don't have to have, we put that as kind of a discretionary thing so that we don't have a lot of people at But if you happen to be downtown and you want to pop in, you can come in. Yeah. Yeah, and Inga, I've done that many times. Yeah. Just pop yeah. in. I was just going to say from what I hear, um, the mayor or the governor is about to lift quite a few, um, you know, ba not bans, but things that have been in place for months. I, or, yeah, I June 2nd. Heard masks, no more masks, June 2nd. June no 2nd, masks. really? Wow. It's happening. Hmm. <laughs> So that may be at least good news for us to get, you know, to allow to be have more people in the space and maybe openings can happen again. Yeah. With food and drink. <laughs> bigger classes. Yeah. And bigger well, classes. Have a yeah. Big party. Yeah. <laughs> really kick it off. Yeah. Pod can cater it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, who knows? We might even be able to have coffee with conversations. Yeah. Yes. Hey. Yeah. Although we do need uh, new sugar and creamer. <laughs> I was cleaning out one of the cupboards and I'm like, this expired in 2017. <laughs> so. Oh, wonderful. Well, Jennifer, thank you for that. <laughs> sure. <laughs> if you have it in the budget. Oh. Some fresh coffee. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. Well, we thank you. We thank you for being with us. It was just delightful. And <laughs> your art is, an expression in your art is phenomenal. Thank you. Uh, do you not agree with me, Katie? Artist, Lindsay, <laughs> artist, Inga, artist, isn't that? <laughs> else is with us this is phenomenal is it not thank you yes <laughs> you're really uh pushing me out of my comfort zone <laughs> oh well i'm going Bye, Inga. <laughs> um, in two weeks which believe it or not is going to be may 27th the mm -hmm. thursday before memorial day our conversations and coffee artist guest is Brian Fumo, who is a glass artist. So join us. Join us. And Alrighty. thank you, Jennifer McCracken. You're welcome. Very nice. And then, I think this was really cool, Jennifer. Enameling is something I really want to take here. So I am inspired by your work to give it a try soon and maybe sometime in the summer. Yeah, definitely. Well, I'm there on Tuesdays working in the studio. You could come by and throw a piece in the kiln. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Alrighty, very yeah. cool. Thank you, everybody, and Lindsay. Yeah, thank you, thank you guys. Thank, thank you, Alan and Lindsay. Uh huh. Bye, bye, Jennifer. Bye, bye. bye.